May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please take a seat. In our readings today, we have so many uh, contrasting themes. So many. Uh, so in the first story, uh, which I paraphrased for uh, the kids' talk, we have Samuel, who is uh, working in the temple, and Eli. And Eli is blind, and Samuel can see. And Samuel hears, and Eli doesn't. And the first question is, do you think for even a moment that God not was, also, was not also calling out to Eli? I promise you God was calling Eli, but he couldn't hear. And I say that because God calls all of us all the time. It's just up to us to hear. And so Samuel could hear, and Eli couldn't. And then in Paul's letter to, uh, to the people in uh, Corinth, we have light and darkness, and then this whole uh, series of opposite ideas. And we are pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. And we have all these sort of conflicting ideas that we've read. And then in the gospel, we have a clue to a solution to this. So let's start with the clue and then we'll work our way back. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and the Pharisees were a deeply religious group. And they were religious because they believed that that was what they, their duty was. They believed that being religious was the right thing to do. And many people will read this and they go, well, then we need to turn our back on religions because the Pharisees were religious and that was the wrong thing to do. No. <laughs> The right thing to do is to stop for a moment and examine our motivations. Because if you come to church because it's your duty, you're not actually coming to church. You're just coming to a building where there are people who are making church. We come to church, and Jesus is pretty blunt about this, for our sake. We come to church for the same reason parents make their children eat their veggies. Because if you just eat lollies, you are going to be sick. We come to church because it is good for us, for our souls, for our spirit. If you think it's just a duty, then it's not doing you any good. Because you don't let it in. You don't let it seep into you, into your heart, if you will. Uh, and then, of course... When you go out into the world, seep back out to, to make the world a slightly more spiritually healthy place. Jesus confronts the Pharisees, particularly in the second uh, story that we read in the Gospel, that the, the man whose hand is shriveled up. And he asks them, is it, what is lawful? And I actually feel sorry for the Pharisees because Jesus is setting up a false dichotomy for them. And I hope that they take a moment to learn from it. Because he's saying, which is the right answer? Pick one. We all do that though, don't we? You know? I want to be right because it makes me feel better today. And if I've got to be right, well that means you've got to be wrong. False dichotomy. All over the place. All over the place. I hope they learn it. The answer is, it is always right to do good, to heal, to bring life. But they are tied into this false dichotomy of, we've got to do our duty to God, and that means we get to turn our backs on this person. So the, the clue, the teaching is, don't buy into the false dichotomy. There's no church, not church. There's no good people, bad people. 
there's no the right time to heal and the right time to pray. Don't buy that dichotomy. The world will try and sell it to us. We, we want it because it makes things easy. Oh, it'd be simple, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be fantastic. I oh, know I don't have to worry about that. I've got to do this thing now. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't buy the false dichotomy. It doesn't help you in the long run. Easy in the short term, not so good in the long run. It's what the world sells. So back to Samuel. Back to Samuel. And if we, and I kind of gave a clue about this, if we look at this and we say we don't have to buy into the false dichotomies, Eli learns and he's able to guide Samuel because he's able to open the eyes of his heart, he's able to, to hear the echo of what God is saying to Samuel and to guide Samuel. We don't have to choose to be blind or to see. We don't have to choose deafness or hearing. We can actually go from not knowing into some level of knowing. Paul and the people at Corinth is trying to help them understand what does it mean to live in this place, though? Because uh, it's not all just head stuff. What does it mean to live in this place where it says, I don't have to accept the dichotomies that the world sells. Uh, he's talking about treasure and jars of clay. Now, uh, I imagine that if you have some really fancy thing at home, it probably originally came in a pretty nice box. Do you know that on YouTube, which has many, many strange things on it. <laughs> on YouTube, there are people who film themselves unboxing stuff. And people will watch that. They will film themselves unboxing their new vacuum cleaner. And people will watch that. Thousands of people watch it. Because the boxing is nice. Because the, the system is nice. There's a surprise. It feels special. It feels like you're being a part of this adventure into a new thing. It's just open the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> but people watch it. Because we have this picture in our mind, if it's in a nice box, it must be a nice thing. And Paul says, no, <laughs> we've got treasure, and we've got treasure that we carry... And it's in jars of clay. Obviously, Paul is talking about himself in that sense. I, you know, Paul's going, I'm not that special. I'm not a pretty box. But I've got great treasure. And, and he looks at the world, and, and many people in the world were not happy with Paul. Some of the early Christians weren't always happy with him. The early, uh, the Jews weren't happy with him. The Romans weren't happy with him. And yet, and yet he was able to continue to proclaim God's treasure because he lived in a place that was both and. So for us, so for us, what's the takeaway? What's the, what's the, 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 the thing we need to try and put into practice? What's our own spiritual discipline? What's your homework for the week? couple of things. These are things that I try and do. One is take a moment to pray when you're somewhere where you wouldn't normally. It's, it's quite challenging. Uh, normally for me, my, my time of prayer is you know, either doing morning prayer or kind of studying or those sorts of things. So my office, those places. Take a moment to pray Maybe just before you meet up with someone for a cup of coffee. Reg is suggesting when you drive. Or is he suggesting when I'm driving? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Gloria prays when Reg drives. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, I'll tell the joke. I'll tell the joke um, very quickly. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of finish with the joke then, rather than more examples. Uh, so, there's a joke of this uh, priest and this taxi driver both die at the same time. And they both front up at the pearly gates. Uh, and um, the priest dies a few seconds earlier, and so uh, St. Peter's filling out the paperwork. Oh, good, oh, good to see you. Yes, yes, good and fat. And he says, oh! Oh, it's the taxi driver! Just, just, just sit over there, mate. And like, there's, there's balloons, there's fireworks, there's... And the priest comes to him later and says, Well, what happened? For years I've been a faithful servant of God. He says, yeah, well, let's be honest. When you preached, what happened? He says, well, I suppose some people fell asleep. Some people didn't listen. And Peter says, yeah. And when he drove, they stayed awake, and they prayed. <laughs> uh, so let's finish with the joke. <laughs> yeah, pray where you don't normally pray. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.